Good morning. Welcome to Camdenton United Methodist. My name is Dave Bowman. I'm standing here because Pastor Steve, his wife Tracy, our music minister Trent, all have COVID. Okay, they're they're in they're in like day six of isolation, so they're they're doing fine, no problem there. But we want to continue to keep them in our prayers. We're going to have a guest speaker this morning, so I'm not preaching. You're lucky, <laughs> uh, and I'll introduce him later on in our service. Okay. I want to remind everybody to fill out the connection card. That's the card that falls out of your bulletin on the floor. <laughs> and we'll put that in the offering plate when it's time. Uh, we had an empty bowl deal going on yesterday. I think it was a big success. I was there real early and had my bowl of chili. Melissa, you want to give us a report? Yes, for our first attempt at this brand new project, we were, we were happy. We didn't know whether we'd have 50 or 500, so it was actually closer to the 50, but we did get 100 bowls made, so there are some left over. So after church, you can purchase one for $20, and all the money goes to Lamb House. So, and I especially want to thank Colette for organizing the meal and all of you people that donated food. So thanks so much. Susan was a big help all day and so was Kelly. So it takes a village. We did it. Pretty pretty good job. Oh, Thank it you, was Melissa. about $1,150. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Melissa. And there's going to be more because I had friends say, hold some back for me. So when we get all of it together, it may be $1,500 for Wonderful. Lamb House. Well, that's great. Thank you again. Thank everybody for that. Thank you for your support. <laughs> Trunk or Treat is coming up October 31st from 5 to 7 here at the church. We need candy. Buckets and buckets and buckets and barrels of candy. If you forget it on Sunday, you can stop by during the week and drop it off in the office. But please... Hit, hit Walmart up and get one of them big bags of candy for the trunk or treat. There's a sign-up sheet in the narthex for actually being a trunk. <laughs> also at the back, there's a sign-up sheet there all the time for volunteers to be greeters, liturgists, or ushers. Please remember to use that and, and give your service that way to the Lord. Um, we especially need ushers for the next two weeks because the normal team is uh, not going to be available. So please think about that. Uh, any other announcements from the congregation? Yes, ma'am. Need a mic? Huh? Here, I can get you. John, I can get it. I just wanted to say I have some very good news. My friend Pat Miller has been quite ill for some time. And they first said, oh, you need to have your aortic valve repaired. And then they said, no, you need a new aortic valve. And we all thought, oh, that's bad. That's really terrible. And so she went on Thursday and they, to find out if they would even do the surgery, because Pat is 90 years old. And the guy said, sure. And she went, and he said, we'll do it tomorrow morning. And she almost fell off her chair. <laughs> okay. And she was in surgery an hour. And this wow. is up at Missouri Baptist in St. Louis. And she came out of surgery and could order lunch that day. She was that good. And she came home yesterday. I mean, modern medical science is amazing. So if you need a new aortic valve, go to Missouri Baptist up in St. Louis. <laughs> Modern medicine is good, but God is great. Any other announcements from the congregation? Back here, Vince. Yes, Dave, I'd like to mention also for Trunk or Treat, uh, the Methodist men will be serving up free hot dogs and bottled water if you show up. All right, remember that. We'll get a free hot dog during tr Trunk or Treat. Okay. Pastor Steve is getting ready to start a new service, and he's prepared a video to show us. 
Hey folks, this is Pastor Steve. I'm out of town today, but I wanted to leave a video for you and share just a couple of things I'm so excited about. First, I'm so thankful that John Brown is with us to, to worship today. Uh, John and I have had some discussions. I'm, I'm really enjoyed my time spent with him, and I know that you are going to appreciate the message that he has to bring today. Second, while I'm out of town today, I will be back tomorrow, and we're going to start our, uh, our Monday evening worship opportunity. This really has been started alongside the confirmation class for some of our youth. I'm so excited about that. That's an opportunity for them to learn more about the church and more about God acting in their lives. And as part of that, we're starting a worship opportunity at 7 p.m. on Mondays. Uh, relative to this service, it's going to have a, a little more conversation. It's going to have some uh, different music to enjoy in that space. Uh, it'll be a little more interactive than this service. And I hope um, some of you will be willing to come alongside and, uh, and give those folks in our confirmation class some, some uh, opportunity to talk to people who are uh, living a life of faith and share with what that means, um, share with them what that means to you. I'm really excited about today. I can't wait to watch this service uh, on video, and I hope some of you will be willing to join us tomorrow evening at 7. It'll be right here uh, in the sanctuary for our first service. I think later we'll move it to the, to the fellowship hall, but tomorrow at 7 in the sanctuary here. God bless you on this morning, uh, and I will be praying for you. As we free ourselves from the daily cares in preparation for worship. Please stand as you're able for the call to worship and then remain standing for our first hymn. Come, give to the Lord your praises of thanksgiving. Come this day, grateful for God's wondrous gifts to us. Sing with great enthusiasm of God's mighty power and love. It is a wonderful thing to praise God. Amen.
At this time, all the kids in the congregation come forward for a little children's time with Wendy. Good. Good. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about forgiveness. Do you guys know what forgiveness is? Yes. Yeah. What do you think that is? It's, it's when you give people a second chance. Oh, that's such a great way to put that. Yeah, you're right. It's when you forgive someone. Right. So if I did something to make you really upset, you could either stay really upset with me or you could forgive me and we could start over, right? Right. Okay, so Mia's going to give you each a clipboard, and there's some paper on it, and then she's going to give you a pencil, and I'm going to tell you what I want you to do after you have your pencil, okay? Okay, so take your pencil, and I want you to make just a mark on your paper, on your clean piece of paper. Yeah, just like that. Okay, so... Sin is like a mistake mark made on a piece of paper. And the eraser is like forgiveness, okay? So erase that mark, and you should have a nice, clean piece of paper left. Very good. That looks really great. Okay, sometimes people make lots of mistakes, okay? And their paper gets really messy, so take your pencil and just really make a lot of scribbles. Really scribble all over it. Nice. <laughs> very, very good. And a pencil only has a small eraser, right? So try to erase all those marks. It's probably going to wear down before you get them all off there. Right? And just like people who are hurt by others' sins get worn down having to forgive over and over again, right? Which is what Jesus wants us to do. And that's why people need Jesus. Did you know that? Because he's like a giant eraser that has the power to wipe sin completely clean and give us a fresh start. We need to always try to forgive others, just like Jesus will always forgive us. But we should encourage others to learn about Jesus and ask for his forgiveness. When we forgive others, we're obeying Jesus, and that's really great. But only Jesus can erase all of our sins and make us brand new. Okay. All right, we're going to stop and we're going to pray. And then when we go back to children's time, I'm going to show you some more things to do with this, okay? You ready to pray? Okay. Dear God, Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. And that through him, and that through him my sins are no longer remembered. My sins are no longer remembered. Help me to offer others. Help me to offer others. The forgiveness that you have given to me. The forgiveness that you have given to me. Help me to forgive from my heart. Help me to forgive from my heart. And teach me that we have been first forgiven. And teach me that we have been first forgiven. And encourage me to forgive in return. And encourage me to forgive in return. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. congregation have praises or concerns that they would like to bring up raise your hand and we'll get you a microphone there's one here John halfway up 
I'd just like for you to continue prayers for all the people that are suffering and trying to rebuild down in Florida because of Hurricane Ian. Others? Okay, as we go to God, we'll take a time of silent prayer, and then I'll close it with a pastoral prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise you for all the joys that we have heard and beseech you for your physical and spiritual healing. We know that there are some among us today with special needs in their own lives. There are physical problems mentioned and unmentioned that tempt our faith. We pray that our faith will remain strong in you. We ask this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us for evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture comes from Matthew 18 and Isaiah 43. In Matthew, verses 21 to 25, Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he could pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he should pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. And from Isaiah 43, verse 25, I, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. The word of God for the people of God. Be God. Please be seated. As we prepare for our offering and our ushers come forward,
time for you to prepare your gift and make sure you fill out your connection card. That's the card that has dropped on the floor on your bulletin at least twice. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for all the gifts and all the blessings that you bestowed upon us. And we take this time to return a portion of those gifts to you for the growth of your church. We pray in Jesus' name. This morning, our guest speaker is Brother John Brown. John is a member of Ozark Chapel. He's here with his wife of 26 years, Cheryl. John is an elder at Bikers for Christ, and both of them work at Lake Regional. Please welcome John Brown to the pulpit. Thank you, sir. Morning. Morning. I bet you didn't see this coming, did you? (laughs) 
I'm here this morning to give a message of hope and love through the subject of forgiveness. Bikers for Christ that I'm in is, uh, they're in every state in the United States and they're in 23 countries. We have approximately 4,000 members. Uh, we enjoy giving the message of Christ to the 1% motorcycle clubs and uh, their families. It's a, it's a tough gig, but uh, we do it with pride. Uh, we have uh, multiple uh, clubs around, well, we're not really a club, we're a motorcycle ministry around the state of uh, Missouri, and uh, we enjoy everything that we do for the community. Uh, I'm also the executive director of the homeless shelter here, just down the street. Uh, we come there every, every other Monday night at 6 o'clock and we have a devotion and uh, speak with the people and then we try to help them as best we can. And the public's invited if y'all want a good meal. They put on a good meal. I'm here this morning to give you the information that I have here that I've struggled with in my life on forgiveness. It was tough for me growing up. There was a lot uh, that things that happened in my life as in everyone else's lives around me. And we struggle with forgiveness. So I'm going to try to make sense of that, what I've learned anyway. We all get hurt. Sometimes a loved one will, see the wrong, will say the wrong thing and he will hurt your feelings. Or your spouse will forget your anniversary. Or someone you thought was your best friend betrays a secret. Most of the time we consider these things to be minor offenses and usually after some time passes and after an apology is made we forgive. But some offenses are more serious and more difficult to forgive. Maybe you were abused as a child and you can't forgive your abuser. Maybe you feel it's impossible to forgive your spouse that you caught cheating on you. Maybe you're in an abusive relationship and you feel there is no way you can ever forgive or forgive that abuse that that person, he or she, is giving to you. Many of us struggle with feelings like this at some times during our lives. What we need to realize is that if we continue to harbor feelings of bitterness or hatred, it will consume us and it will make us unusable to God. It will destroy not only our witness, but our peace and our joy as well. In Hebrews 12, 14 and 15, we see that take shape. Work at living in peace with everyone and work at living a holy life. For those that are not holy will not see the Lord. Look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. If we are unwilling to forgive someone, feelings of hatred and bitterness will grow. And they'll grow within us. And they'll choke the life out of our relationship with God. Even worse, it can spread to others, causing splits in families, and churches. What did Jesus say about forgiveness? In Matthew 6, Jesus is talking about prayer, and he gives us the, he gives the disciples what is be known as the Lord's Prayer, as we said earlier. In our church, we pray this prayer every Sunday morning. And sometimes, I'm not sure that we have said it so many times that we don't really listen to what we are saying. Jesus said, after this manner, therefore we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into tempta temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Did you catch verse 12? The word trespass means sins in this context. Let me read this verse to you this way as the National Living Translation brings it. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
When we are reciting that prayer, we're asking God to forgive us, just like we forgive others. Now that's a sobering thought. How well are you at forgiving others? Let's think about this for a minute. Jesus is not saying that we cannot be saved if we refuse to forgive others. Our salvation depends completely on Jesus and what he has done, not what you and I do. If we had to forgive someone else as a condition for salvation, we could claim that we earned it by doing work. And the Bible says that Jesus is not talking about forgiveness that leads to salvation, but forgiveness that leads to fellowship with him. Jesus is talking about sins that we commit after we become a Christian. Sin in our lives as Christians will hinder our growth and cause us to be out of fellowship with God and with our brothers and sisters. It will cause God to stop blessing us and to chastise us instead. The point that Jesus is making is that if we have truly experienced the forgiveness of God, we ought to mirror that attitude and forgive others that have sinned against us. Jesus told a parable about this in Matthew 18, 21 through 22, when Peter comes and asks Jesus a question. He says, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. That's a lot. The Jewish custom of Jesus' day was to forgive someone three times for the same transgression. If they did it more than three times, they were considered to be non-repentant. And they were no long, you were no longer required to forgive them. Peter thought that he was being especially generous by forgiving seven times. But Jesus says that you should keep on forgiving as many times as it takes. What if God only forgave us three times for the awful things that we do sometimes? I am glad that God is merciful and will forgive us time and time again as we fail. This is not a license to sin, but a characteristic of a loving and merciful God. What about a person that has done something to aggravate you and continues to make you mad? What about that person that cuts you off in traffic because they're in a hurry. What about those people that make fun of you behind your back because you are different? In the parable, Matthew 18, 21 through 35, the king is God and the servants are us. The first servant owes the king an unimaginable amount and there's no way in the world that it can ever be repaid. He pleads with the king to give him more time and he will repay it all. This would be like somebody saying, if you'll just give me some time, I'll pay off the national debt. It's impossible. The debt is way too much. But the king takes pity on the servant and he forgives the debt. He erases it. Through no action of his own, the servant's debt is cleared. But the servant goes out and he finds another servant that owes him money. The amount given here would be the equivalent of several months of pay. Now that would be a great amount to most of us, but it's nothing compared to the debt that the first servant owed. As before, the second servant asked for more time, but the first servant, he refuses to give that man, and he throws him into prison until the debt is paid. When the king finds out, he is furious. He calls that servant back and he says, you evil servant. I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant, just as I had mercy on you? So the king has the unmerciful servant cast into prison until he can pay off his debt. Notice there is no mention of eternal damnation here. The servant was already saved, but he ended God's blessings on his life because he refused to forgive. Jesus finishes by saying in Matthew 18:35, that's what my that's what my heavenly Father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. So, 
How do we forgive someone that has done something unthinkable to us? It's not easy. If you're waiting around to feel like you have forgiven them, you're in for a long wait. You must take the initiative. You must decide to love and forgive and keep on deciding to love and forgive. And finally, one day you have. After all, isn't that the way God forgives us? He doesn't forgive us because we're so lovable or because we deserve it or because he feels all warm and fuzzy when he forgives us. He has chosen to forgive us when we ask and he has chosen to love us unconditionally. A step in the right direction is to pray for those who hurt you in Luke 6, 27. But to you who are willing to listen, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who hurt you. In Matthew 5, 43 and 46, you have heard the law says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight both to the evil and the good. And he sends rain on the just and the unjust. If you love only those who love you, what reward is that? We can pray that God changes their heart and works in their life. Maybe the reason that they have hurt you so much is they have been hurt themselves. Pray that God heals their hurt. Pray that God will shower his love upon them and draw them to repentance. The first couple of times you pray like that, you may not really mean it. But the point is, keep praying. If you continue to do it over and over again, you'll see something happen. Your prayers, may, your prayers may, not, or may not or may change that person that you're praying for, but your prayers will change you. Your attitude towards that person will change, and one day you will be able to forgive them. Ephesians 4, 31, 32. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Colossians 3, 12, and, uh, 12 through 14. Since God chose you to be holy people that he loves, you must clothe yourself with tender-hearted tender mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgive you and you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourself with love which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. Are you convicted as I am? This can be acted upon this week. Think about that person that you just can't seem to forgive. Pray for them all week. As you begin next week, continue to pray and be determined to do something nice for them. You might be surprised at what happens. So we should pray for those that hurt us and we should do good to them. Is that all? I believe that there's one more step. We need to try to forget what that person has done to offend us, especially if, they've, if they have asked for forgiveness. Again, I know that this is not easy to do, and some of you might say, how can I forget it? I think about it constantly. It hurts. Normally, when we think about the word forget, we think about accidental forgetting. Like you forgot to pick up the groceries at the store. You forgot an appointment. You forgot to set the alarm clock. You didn't actually mean to do any of those things. It just slipped your mind and you forgot. The forgetting I'm talking about is intentional forgetting. One of the definitions for the word forget in Webster's dictionary is to disregard intentionally. That means you choose to ignore it. 
It may still be in your memory, but you act as if it never happened. Again, isn't that what God does for us? Remember, God is all-knowing. He chooses not to remember our sins by intentionally forgetting. I once heard a story about two monks that had taken vows to never touch a woman. One day they were walking back to the monastery. They came to a stream. A woman was trying to cross, but she was not strong enough to stand in the current. She asked for their help. The first monk said that he had made a vow never to touch a woman and that he couldn't do it. The woman continued to plead with them until finally the second monk was filled with compassion. He took her in his arms and he carried her across that stream. The other monk followed and they continued on their journey. They walked for miles and they did not speak. Finally, the first monk said with disgust, I cannot believe you picked up that woman. You know that we're never supposed to touch the opposite sex. The second monk replied, I put her down miles ago. Why do you still carry her in your heart? We can continue to carry that hurt with us until we die. Or we can choose to forgive and forget. So praying for someone is the first step to forgiveness. What's the next step? Choosing to do good to them. Jesus taught in Matthew 7, 12, so whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Notice that Jesus doesn't say to wait until you see how someone treats you so that you will know how to treat them. He says that you should treat them the way you want them to treat you. Whether they do or not is not the point. But sometimes doing good things for people has a way of softening their heart. And it definitely can soften yours. In closing, let me encourage you to do what the Word of God has given us today. If you are struggling with forgiveness, begin to pray for that person that has offended you. Be patient. If you have been harboring ill feelings towards that person for months or years, don't expect for those feelings to vanish overnight. Continue to pray every day until you have truly forgiven. Don't forget to ask God for his help as you pray. Choose to do good things for this person, whether they respond or not. Buy their lunch. Do something nice for their kids. Let them know that you are praying for them. And then finally, decide to intentionally forget what they have done to you. They may never change, but you will. And one day when you stand before God at the judgment, your conscience will be clear. Let us pray. Father, we ask that you will fill our hearts with your forgiving love. And because of this, we are forgiven. Let not our hearts dwell without prayer every day for the right and repentant heart. We ask for forgiveness in the countries that are fighting and killing each other as we speak. Give help to those who are sick and not able to defend themselves from the evil around us. Give strength especially to our military, our police, firefighters, and first responders, and all those who stand for freedom in this world around us. So in your name we pray, and we thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John, for that important and pertinent message to us this morning. Congregation, please stand for the singing of our final song.
And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Go in peace and joy and love. Thank you.